Um, this is from a story called The Workers' Club by Peretz Markish. I'll only read it in English, uh, just a, sh a short, a short piece of it. And this is a, a negotiation, shall we call it, between the new Soviet regime and uh, the people who run a synagogue or shul. And uh, some of the characters, uh, they're all Jewish characters from both sides, all sides. And uh, Kop Koppelman is the, is the frontier soldier who really wants to be a fighter, uh, but he's He's got to come back from the front and negotiate over turning a shul into a workers' club. And he's got to, he's Jewish, of course, his secretary's Jewish, and he's got to deal with all these bloody Jews. How do you do this? Um, and the biggest impediment is Beryl. Beryl, the carpenter's home, reeking of glue, wood shavings, and furniture polish, was loud with the, graping, the grating rasp of boards being sawn and workers blustering. Hanging on the wall were saws, chisels, planes, a picture of the Vilna Gaon, Moses Montefiore, Trotsky, and the blank cardboard of a used calendar displaying a landscape of fly droppings. Part of an unmade bed and a suspended child's cradle that looked like a hanging lamp were both visible through the half-open door to the alcove. Before the gathering of workers assembled in Beryl the carpenter's home and awaiting the party instructor, Herschel the butcher was hacking words like a four quarter of beef. People, I want to know this. What are workers? What sort of mysterious language is this? Workers. Herschel the butcher spoke with the greatest difficulty. Since he had to sweat blood to find the right turn of phrase, he flushed and ground his teeth. Every now and again he wiped his nose with the palm of his hands, and as he spoke his eyes, last, lacking eyelashes, looked as though he was chewing a beetle. He seemed to be dragging the words out of his mouth one by one with his hands, as though with pincers. I've been a butcher now for 25 years. During my time I've talked over things with cows, with horses, with oxen, with the kind of oxen you don't even see nowadays. But I've never heard language like this. Workers! When he finally uttered this last word he was obviously relieved as though someone had just lifted a heavy side of beef off his shoulders. But the other men took him up. Well, and what if there are workers? Does it matter? Is that a reason to take, Jews, uh, to take a shul away from Jews? What kind of example is that meant to be? No. Herschel was still unable to calm himself, and he turtled, turned to Beryl's schoolboy son. No, come over here for a moment, little ruffian. Come, tell me now. You're a learned fellow, one of them. So tell me, please, maybe you know, what exactly is a worker? What kind of word is that? What does it mean? Hasn't anybody taught you anything? The carpenter's boy laughed in embarrassment. Worker? Calling out the word worker, the boy ran into the alcove and Herschel followed him. Don't run away, don't run away. Herschel pulled the boy by the hands. I'm telling you, don't run away, come here. Your father's a carpenter, this one's a baker, that one's a tailor, he's a this, he's a that. I understand these words, but what's a worker? <laughs> Tell me, by all means, let's hear. The carpenter's wife made herself heard from the alcove. Enough, that's enough. If they want workers, let them have workers. What difference does it make to you? Just stop quarreling and fighting over, you, over this. What's it supposed to mean? They want something. What does it mean? The butcher sprang up like a dog in a chain. Who are they? Who? Does it matter what they want? And who actually wants it? Kutzik the louse wants it. That pile of unpicked thread threads, that maggot, he's the one pulling the strings here. Do they only want workers? No. They also want the shul. They want to take the shul away from the workers. They want the keys. Go give them the keys. They want to make a theatre out of the holy place. That's what they want. They want... Who knows what they want? And ten, page letter, uh, ten pages later, Beryl is, of course, then leading the May Day parade carrying the banner. And all the tailors and carpenters and other workers are behind him because they decided that the shul itself is a worker. So. <laughs>